have the highest diversity of freshwater mussels on the planet. We have 63 federally listed species in the state with another seven or eight more species pending listing. Many of these species are found only in Alabama. These animals are important to the ecosystem because they're basically the freshwater filters that we had in our rivers historically. A moderate sized animal is capable of filtering two gallons of water an hour. Freshwater mussels uh, feed on a variety of organisms that live in fresh water. And they'll eat everything from bacteria to small microscopic algae. And that improves water clarity and water quality for other animals and for water treatment plants that happen to be along the same river. Freshwater mussels are obligate parasites and for any individual species of freshwater mussel, there's only a handful of fish that will successfully transform the larvae. The larvae attaches to a fish, stays on there for a period of four to six weeks, and it falls off as a juvenile mussel. For some species, what we can do is extract the larvae directly from the female. We'll literally flush the larvae out of the gill with a hypodermic syringe filled with well water. And through repeated flushing, we can remove the larvae mechanically from the animal without causing the animal undue harm. Uh, so we'll collect those larvae and then we'll place them into a bucket with a certain volume of water and a certain number of fish so that we infect those fish at a rate of around three to 500 larvae per fish. After we've collected those newly transformed larvae, we've got to begin culturing them. They go into a different upwelling system that's basically made out of buckets and small capsules uh, that, that pushes water with very small food through this, through this screen. After a period of about six to eight weeks, uh, in the initial grow out period, we then transfer the animals to our final grow out uh, that's, that's based on a modified pond. Once they hit that pond, uh, it's a process of about uh, 12 months to 14 months uh, grow out in that final phase uh, in the pond before they're ready to be counted, tagged, and taken to the release site. The reason that we do the propagation is to initiate a new population of these animals because only a newly established reproducing population will generally meet that downlisting criteria that the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service demands for uh, recovery. Uh, within the last uh, 20 years, both TVA and Alabama Power have begun habitat restoration efforts in various sections of the respective drainages. Uh, and with those improved flows comes the possibility that we can actually put these animals back into areas of their former range. Uh, with any given year, uh, we have done uh, we've released 12 federally listed species in a single year, uh, in one year, uh, and we've established nearly all of the species that we've released at this point. All of them are persisting where we put them out, uh, and in about five cases, we're finding fertilized females at the site. This year we've released about 30,000 animals of about eight different species this year alone. The whole process takes at least five years, if not a decade, to complete a new population reintroduction. Once we see that we've, we're finding juvenile animals from the species that we've reintroduced, we have a new population and we're moving towards uh, either downlisting or delisting the species uh, from the endangered species list.